Chapter 3b, section 3.1, we're going to define radioactivity, describe three types of radioactive decay, and predict the products of an alpha and beta decay. So what exactly is radioactivity? When an unstable isotope that has extra energy tries to become stable by splitting to release that extra energy. So if we look at the animation, here an unstable nuclei has split, releasing a particle or energy in order to become more stable. Spontaneous alpha decay is one type of radioactivity. Here, plutonium is unstable. It releases a, an alpha particle and then becomes a new nucleus, which is a little bit more stable. So let's see how we represent subatomic particles. First of all, protons will be generally represented with a P 1 over 1. Remember that this represents the atomic number and the top number represents the mass number. Neutrons are represented with a 1 over 0 N and electrons are represented with a 0, negative 1 E. There are three ways to lose energy in order to become more stable for radioactivity. The first is alpha, and I do want you to know that the symbol for alpha is the Greek symbol A. Beta is the second type, and the symbol for beta is the Greek letter B. And then gamma emissions are the third type, which has the Greek letter for gamma, which is kind of like a fish diving downward. So other radioactive particles you should be familiar with. First, the alpha particle. 4 over 2 helium, also known as a helium nucleus, is called an alpha particle. So alpha particle and 4 over 2 helium, or helium nucleus, are synonymous with one another. A beta particle is the same thing as a 0 over negative 1 electron. So when we state a beta particle has been emitted, then we would write a 0 over negative 1 electron to represent that. In alpha decay, a helium nucleus is emitted in order for the nucleus to become more stable. So here I have a americium-241, and it emits an alpha particle, which means that it loses two protons and two neutrons. Recall that two protons is the symbol for helium, and helium has a mass number of four when we have two protons and two neutrons. So it's going to emit this alpha particle, and afterwards, notice that the atomic number is going to be two less than it was before. When looking on the periodic table, neptunium has an atomic number two less than americium. And notice that the mass number has also dropped by four, from 241 to 237. So here, Uranium-238 over 92, we're going to emit the alpha particle, 4 over 2 helium, and the other nucleus that forms is going to be thorium. Notice that we have to have a balance with our atomic numbers and mass numbers. 234 plus 4 equals 238, which is what it should equal since our reactant started out with 238 as a mass. Matter cannot be created nor destroyed. Energy must also be conserved. So your masses before and after should be equal. That's likewise with the atomic numbers. 90 plus 2 equals 92, which is the amount of my atomic number to begin with. So one more time, we're going to see 239 plutonium. When it gives off the alpha particle, notice that the atomic number drops by 2 and the mass number drops by 4. So here's some examples. Note, the symbol on the arrow indicates alpha decay or loss of a helium nucleus. So this is the symbol for alpha decay, letting you know that you should write a 4 over 2 helium as your first particle that's lost, plus, and now, 4 and whatever number I place here must equal 240. So we know that this number is going to be 236. And then the 2 plus whatever number I place down here must equal 94. So 2 plus 92 is going to equal 94. And if we look on our periodic table, we'll find element number 92, which is uranium. 
And so that's what element symbol we will write here. And here's our final answer without the brackets above and below. The next one is 252 over 99 Einsteinium. It's going through alpha decay, so we're going to emit an alpha particle. And 252 minus 4 is going to equal 248. 99 minus 2 is going to equal 97. We look on the periodic table for element number 97 and we find it's BK, which is berkelium. Lastly, 222 over 86 radon undergoes alpha decay, so it emits an alpha particle. 222 minus 4 equals 218. 86 minus 2 equals 84. We look on the periodic table for element number 84 and we find it to be polonium. A beta decay occurs when a neutron in the nucleus changes into a proton and an electron. The electron is given off in the form of a beta particle, that's E0 over negative 1, and the proton remains in the nucleus, which causes our atom to change up by one atomic number from carbon to nitrogen, which is atomic number 6, and nitrogen has atomic number 7. So here's showing you that a neutron, 1 over 0, will turn into a proton and an electron. The electron is the beta particle which is emitted and the proton remains behind in the nucleus. So as an example, thorium is going to yield a beta particle and this is the other nucleus. Remember that the masses must remain the same before and after the reaction. However, because a beta particle has no mass, we don't have a change in mass. So while the mass was 234 before, it remains 234 afterwards. 234 plus 0 equals 234. Then the atomic number, remember, it goes up by 1. So 91 minus 1 equals 90, which is what balances our atomic numbers. So be sure you recognize that the 90 has to go up by 1 because 91 minus 1 is going to equal 90. Or it's because we end up with a proton extra in the nucleus. So here's our beta decays. The B over the arrow represents that a beta decay occurs and thus a beta particle is lost. So we're going to write the symbol for a beta particle which is 0 over negative 1 E for electron plus and then we're going to look at 240 minus 0 equals 240. 94 minus a negative 1 which means plus 1 is going to equal 95. And element number 95 is AM, americium. Okay, 254 over 100 FM. And that's going to give us a beta particle plus 254 over 101. And 101 is Mendelavium. Okay, last one, 228 over 89 actinium undergoes a beta decay, we get a 0 over negative 1 E plus 228 over 90 and element number 90 is thorium. Other radioactive particles and energies include the gamma radiation or gamma particle. Notice gamma has 0 mass and a 0 for atomic number. And then another particle which happens to be a particle of antimatter, would be the positive electron or positron, which has a mass of zero and a charge of plus one. Gamma decay is simply high energy emissions that are emitted, and it can happen during both the processes of alpha decay and beta decay. So gamma decay can accompany the other types of radioactive decay simultaneously. You can actually technically have all three occurring at the same time as well. So to summarize, our nucleus, if it emits an alpha particle, it'll be also known as a helium nucleus in which we lose a mass of four and lose two protons, dropping the atomic number by two. If our nucleus emits a beta particle, that's also going to be known as an electron. And 
that is going to have a mass of zero and a charge of negative one. And finally, if our nucleus emits a gamma photon, then we're going to have a mass of zero and an atomic number of zero, which causes no change to the original nucleus. We simply have given off high energy in this case scenario.